Hello, my dear lovely students. A very warm welcome to this session. Welcome to the NEET Selection Express, where we are discussing some important questions for your NEET 2023 examination and also some questions which are your PYQs. Previous year questions, you know, practicing is important. Some exam because if we talk about this chapter, which is your animal kingdom, there are lots of examples. And if you'll go for your PYQs, your previous year questions, uh, at least you should practice these question with this you will be able to at least remember or revise your those examples which are there in your NCRT because these examples they are enough right so are you ready I am your zoology teacher Chavi ma'am and let's start this session let's kick start the session so simultaneously with me you have to practice the questions if I am uh, reading the question by the time keep revising that uh, uh, yes the concepts also I'll uh, make sure that I should give you the in a detail concept also because that is also required and uh, I will be looking for other options also which are incorrect like why they are incorrect because with that you will be able to recall the whole topic related to that chapter clear so let's start this chapter so this is your animal kingdom now first question is which one of the following categories of the animals is correctly described with no single exception correctly described right correctly right so whenever guys we have to look for a correct or incorrect option always remember the first thing you have to do is underline this word correctly either you attempt that question or not always remember this is the only thing which you have to do four option all the sponges the marine they have a collared cell no all sponges they do not have collared cells they do not have collared cells this is incorrect now next one all the mammals they are viviparous or uh, possess diaphragm for breathing no all are not viviparous guys we have a well-known example of duck billed platypus this is also incorrect all reptiles possess scales and they have three chambered heart and cold blooded no we have an example of a crocodile who has four chambered herds. So how can this option is correct? Now all the bony fishes, they have a four pair of gills and an operculum on each side. Yes, this is 100% right. That means the bony fishes, your ostic thighs, the bony fishes, they have four pairs of the gills and they have an operculum. That means their gills, they have a gill slips and those gills are covered with operculum. Always remember. But whereas this is absent in the case of your cartilaginous fishes. Now, which one of the following pairs of the animals they are similar to each other pertaining to the feature stated organism? So, we have some organisms and related to that features are there and guys you have to match it. Those options th like the option which is right you have to mark it that this is a correct option. First is Ascaris and Encyclostoma. They show metameric segmentation. No, they do not show metameric segmentation. This is incorrect. Scaris, uh, sorry, seahorse and the flying fish. They are cold blooded. Seahorse. What is seahorse? This is your hippocampus. Hippocampus. Next is a flying fish, which is your exocetus. Exocetus. Yes. Flying fish, exocetus. They both are po poikilotherms. This is absolutely right. 100% right. Pteropus and Ornithorhynchus, they show viviparity. Now, whenever we say, uh, say or Ornithorhynchus, your duck billed platypus, now what do they do? They lay eggs. They lay eggs. Now, garden lizard and crocodile, three chambered. Crocodile, they have four chambered heart. They have four chambered heart. They have four chambered heart. Right, guys? Right? Four chambered heart. Is it clear? So, out of these four options, if you look at these four options, which option is correct? Yes, option B is correct. That means they are cold blooded, they are poikilotherms, whereas some exceptions, some wrong things are there in other options. So, guys, whenever you are practicing, one rule you have to follow whenever you are doing practice of the questions. Right? 
now guys you know that we have we have to dedicate at least 15 hours a day at least 15 hours a day uh, five hours for each chapter five hours for physics five hours for chemistry and five hours for the physics this is what you have to do and uh, this is what your target should be now suppose for the five hours you are doing or it's all up to you also if you can sit for five five hours per subject that is very good if you can uh, like that particular time period should be dedicated time period so out of this the three hours you have to spend like this three hours that you are doing doing theory you're doing theory right whereas for the three hours two hours two hours which is left you have to practice question this is what your strategy should be right now like i can we can count days when we are saying your neat examination, we can actually count days that this much number of the days they are left. Clear? Now, whenever you are doing this practice, now focus over here. Whenever you are doing a practice of the questions, what do you, what is the thumb rule which you have to follow? Now, suppose we are practicing one question and one, questions, one question definitely has four options. Out of these four options, we know one option is correct and rest all, rest all the options, they are incorrect. This is also incorrect, this is also incorrect. Clear? At the time of practice, other than looking for a correct option, you have to look at these options also, that why they are incorrect. Why incorrect? Why they are incorrect? Can you correct it? So this is what you have to do. This is a thumb rule which you have to follow. And this is what I follow in my sessions. When we have four options, why other options they are incorrect? See, we can directly, see, it's not that it is your chemistry or your physics subject. In the chemistry or physics, suppose you are uh, practicing a numerical. In the numerical, we have only one correct answer and rest all are incorrect. But in this case, why other options they are incorrect? Because the question is a theory-based question. But yes, somewhere or other we have examples also in biology where only one option is correct. So these are the some exception cases. But this is the thumb rule which you have to follow while practicing questions. Now, next one is the most poisonous fish is. The most poisonous fish, clownfish, eelfish, the tiger fish, this is a tiger fish, and the stonefish. So always remember, this is the one thing which you have to remember. See, biology, most of the topics are there which you have to understand. These are the concepts which you have to understand and accordingly you have to perform. But there are some things which you actually have to remember. Like the stonefish. Yes, stonefish is the one which is very much poisonous. So these are the short notes which you can make. Guys, what you can do is you can take out your NCRT right now. You can write it there in the NCRT. Or you can make a short note so that a day before the examination, you can go to uh, go through those short notes. So that you can make. But right now, if you are continuously writing whatever your teachers are saying, if you are continuously uh, watching a session and you just keep on writing and writing and you are just making a notes, when will you study them? Because you won't get the time. So try to make some short notes. Like within a one a half an hour, you have completed one chapter by making a short note. So you can write it, write it down your NCRT. So thumb rule. These are the very important rules, guys, which you have to follow. Find out the correct matching. So again, we have to look for a correct option. <laughs> so again, I'm saying either you attempt or not. Always remember, make a uh, box around the correct or incorrect word so that it keep on striking. We have to look for the correct answer or the correct answer or the incorrect answer. Now, ostrich, peacock, tyromyzon, vertebrate exception we have is a tyromyzon. Now, ostrich, we all know, and the peacock, yeah, these are vertebrates. And tyromyzon, they are saying they are exception. No. They are cyclostome. You remember cyclostome, your jawless vertebrates. This is incorrect. So here, guys, this question is, we have three options like this, and one exception is there. Three option, one character, and out of that one character, this, is, this character is absent in one of the organism, and accordingly, the options are given. Second is Ascaris leech in the earthworm. They are saying they are u silomate except we have is Ascaris. That means they are saying that the leech and the earthworm, they are u silomate whereas the Ascaris is not. Ascaris is your roundworm. So Ascaris is what? This is a pseudo silomate. Absolutely right. Pseudo silomate. Right? Very well. Very well said. We will go for this option. 
This is absolutely right. The first option is incorrect. Let's look at the other option also. Third option. Scolidon pistis exocetus. They are oxys, uh, ostic thighs. Exception we have is exocetus. Um, when we say scolidon, scolidon is ostic thighs or chondric thighs? This is your chondric thighs. Chondric thighs, cartilaginous fishes. Pistis. This is also your chondric thighs. Now, whereas exocetus, this is your ostic thighs. Right? So, exception, they are saying exocetus? No. Now, next one we have is Bafurana chelone. Guys, and they are saying reptile. What are these? Amphibian. Amphibian. Clear? So, this is also wrong. This is also wrong. We will go for option B in this case. Is it correct? Right? Is it correct? So, this is how you have to practice. More and more guys you are going to practice like at least for the animal kingdom. The chapter I know this chapter is huge. And completing this chapter within an hour or the two or the three hours that is not at all enough. Either you will go, you go only for the NCRT or you have your own notes. Three hours they are not at all enough. You cannot complete it. But at least PYQs you have to complete. All the examples which are there in the PYQs, you have to keep it here. And right now also start making short notes for this PYQs. Now the phylum arthropod, one of the representative, flying fish, cuttlefish, silverfish and the pufferfish. Correct option we have is the silverfish. Guys, your silverfish, this is not a fish which is found in oceans or your water. They are not aquatic. In fact, they belong to the phylum Arthropoda. Arthropoda. I remember a day when uh, I was in my class ten, uh, 12 standard, I guess, and uh, uh, my dad, uh, he is uh, an engineer. So, at that time, I was uh, studying some ga gates, NAND gates, AND gates, etc. And uh, my dad, he was teaching me, like, this, this is how an AND gate works, this is how a NAND gate works. And he took out his books. You know, we still have that thing that um, I, I have all my books. So, in fact, he also, uh, he has his own books. So, we used to keep them. We have our own li library. We keep those books. So, he took out his books. Yes, after so long time, he took out that book where the AND gates and the NAND gates, they were uh, uh, detailed explained. Though that detail was not required and they were actually going out of my head. So, uh, when he took out those books, uh, we found some um, arthropods in that, some fish-like creatures, something like this. Very small, right? They were segmented. They were not fish, actually. They are the lepisma. These are the lepisma, that is a silver fish, uh, actively moving, uh, basically they feed on the cellulose of our books. So, this is what we, uh, this is, uh, what we found. And uh, if you are not appearing for the NEET examination, definitely. And if you haven't gone through your books and if you are watching this session and you are like, maybe after some, di time, after some days we will take out our NCRT, you can find uh, some lepisma, uh, lepisma must be there. Now. Let's move on to the next question. Which group of animals belong to the same phylum? Sponges, we have sea anemone, the starfish, malaria parasite, amoeba, mosquito, etc. Et Let's look at each of these options one by one. The first we have is a sponges. Sponges belongs to Porifera. Porifera. Right? We have is a sea anemone. Sea anemone. Sea anemone be belongs to your sealant traits or nidarian. Now, next we have a starfish. Starfish belong to Echino. Echino Dermata. Now, next one is malarial parasite. Malarial parasite we have is Plasmodium. Plasmodium. Right? And Amoeba. Both of them belongs to your protozoa. Protozoa. Whereas next we have is a mosquito. Mosquito, they are what? They are arthropoda. Arthropoda. Clear? Now, next one we have is earthworm, pinworm, and the tapeworm. Earthworms are what? 
दे आर एनालिडा एनालिडा देन वी हैव इज अ पिन वर्म पिन वर्म्स बिलोंग्स टू द राउंड वर्म दैट इज योर एस्केलेमिंथस एस्केलेमिंथस now next one we have is a tapeworm tapeworm belongs to your uh, platyhelminthes platy helminthes clear now the next one we have is a prawns scorpion and the locusta all of them belongs to the arthropoda arthropoda right so which option is right we will go for option d in this case clear so with this question i make sure that all these example at least 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 12 examples with their phylum we have discussed right is it right is it clear so this is how the questions will be asked guys this is how we will be having questions in your examination and this is how you have to uh, practice thumb rule remember now infection of ascaris usually occurs by ascaris read about it by the time let me drink some water four options are there guys read 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 so yes infection of ascaris usually occurs by first is a mosquito bite drinking water containing eggs of ascaris eating in perfectly cooked poke cc fly normally whenever we eat outside food and some water which is contaminated with the eggs of ascaris we get this infection so correct option we have is drinking water containing eggs of ascaris now guys you know what is the life cycle so so guys whenever you consume eggs no desperately definitely you are not going to consume eggs no egg is basically coming with the water right suppose what happened is your ground water is infected with the sewage water so they will be having eggs and if you'll consume this water what will happen this eggs will enter into your gut right here they will undergo a uh, larval development larval development these larva they enter into liver then they enter they can migrate up to the lung where they undergo various larval formation then the other uh, uh, then they enter into the gut in the gut they form adult stages what do they form is adult stages they form adult right adult stages adult stages will undergo what sexual reproduction sexual reproduction now sexual reproduction with the help of sexual reproduction what do they do is they produce eggs they are going to produce eggs right now these eggs they will come out they will come out by feces your feces will be covered with eggs they will be full of eggs so this is how it spreads clear yeah, this is a basic life cycle i have discussed this is how it happens now moving on to the next we have is which of the following are correctly matched now this is what we have to say the correctly matched with respect to their taxonomic classification now first is spiny ant eater sea urchin sea cucumber echinodermata what is this tiny spiny ant eater this is your chordate you remember this is your chordate now this is they do not uh, this uh, doesn't belong to arthropod this is not right so this option is uh, sorry this doesn't belong to echinoderm so this is not right next is a flying fish flying fish is your exocetus cuttlefish and silverfish they are saying pisces no this belongs to arthropoda arthropoda so this option is also eliminated now moving on to the next one we have is a centipede millipede spider and insecta no 
centipede, millipede, like they do not belong to insecta. They are not insects. Yes, they are arthropods. They have jointed legs, but they do not belong to insecta. Clear? Now, next is a housefly, butterfly, CC fly, silverfish. They belong to insecta. This is absolutely right. So, which option are we going for? Option D. So, like this, you have to explore, guys, other options also. Now, moving on to the next is match the name of the animal column 1 with the one characteristics column 2 and the phylum is given in the column 3. So, correct option again you have to look for. Clear buddies? Now, listen. Column 1 we have is Ademsia, radially symmetrical, absolutely right. Porifera. No, they are not poriferans. Then what they are? They are your sealant rates. Now, next one is Petromyzon ectoparasite cyclostom. Absolutely right. Ichthyophyes terrestrial, and they are saying reptile. Oh my God. They are amphibian. They are amphibian. Next one we have is Limulus body covered with chitinous exoskeleton, and they are saying they are Pisces. Oh my God. They are not Pisces, they are arthropods. Arthropods. Now, let us move on to the next question. So, hope the B option is correct. Now, which of the following pairs of organism possess stinging cells nematocyte? C fan, C pen. We have cobra, scorpion. We have cockroach and mosquito. We have wasp and honeybee. What will be the right answer? The correct option we have is C fan and the C pen. Right? They have nematocytes and the stinging cells. Now, moving on to the next we have is which one of the following living, living organism completely lacks cell wall? They do not have cell wall. Cyanobacteria. We have C. fan gorgonia. We have Saccharomyces blue green algae. I guess this is a most easiest question one can ask from animal kingdom. The animal kingdom animalia they won't be having cell wall. The C. fan. Now moving on to the next question. Select the taxon mentioned that represent both marine and the fresh water species, echinoderms, tenophore, uh, cephalocordates or cnidarian. So, this you have to remember that in nidarians we have both. We have fresh water as well as we have marine organisms. Clear? Clear bodies? So, always practice such questions. This, this is directly from your NCRT. I won't say this is uh, different or this, is, this came from some outside syllabus. No. Planaria poses high capacity of, that is regeneration. Planaria always poses high capacity of regeneration. So, uh, uh, how does a planaria look like? This is how a body of planaria look like. So, when you cut these parts, each and every part will regenerate into a whole organism. So, this will also form whole organism whole organism. This will also form whole organism. This is also form whole organism. This capacity, this is termed as regeneration. This is regeneration. Okay, buddies. Now, let us move on to the next question. Yes. A marine cartilaginous fish that can produce electric current. Four options are there. The first is Pristis, Torpedo, Trigon or Scoliodon. What is the correct answer? The torpedo. So, torpedo, hope this is visible. Now, hope uh, now things are visible. Torpedo is the correct answer. Torpedo produces electric currents. So, it gives you a shock. So, do not go near to these organisms. They can give you shock. Now, moving on to the next is, uh, uh, find out the correct option regarding the following organism. Fasciola, we have is Ascaris, we have Nereus and Periplaneta. So, four options are there. Now, Fasciola hepatica, sheep liver fluke. Then we have is Ascaris, Nereus, and Periplaneta. They are saying, except Fasciola, rest all have a complete digestive system. Yes, this is absolutely right. Fasciola doesn't have a complete digestive system. A sheep liver fluke, right? Sheep liver fluke. They belong to Platyhelminthus. They belong to Platyhelminthus. Whereas this belong to your Ascalaminthus. Now, this belongs to your Annelida. Now, this belongs to Arthropoda. Arthropoda. Clear? This is absolutely right. We, can, we will go for this option. Let us look at, let us explore other options also. Ascaris and Nereus, they have an internal fertilization. 
Ascaris and Neris, they are saying they have an internal fertilization. No, incorrect. Now, next one we have is except Ercaris, all others show metamerism. No. Periplaneta has compound eyes, uh, the other doesn't have. No. Clear? Now, let's move on to the next question. Which of the following is correct match? Again, the correct match we have to look for. Human and the frogs. Human and the frogs, they have nucleated RBC. In fact, when we say humans, humans we have enucleated RBC. Enucleated RBC. The frogs, they have nucleus in their RBC. Ascaris and the liver fluke, they undergo internal fertilization. Yes, this is right. Earthworms in the cockroach sh sh show sexual dimorphism. They are saying they showed sexual dimorphism. Earthworms are what? Earthworms, you are hermaphrodite. They are hermaphrodite. Both the sexes, they are present within the same individual. So, this cannot be a correct option. Cockroach, it is right. Male cockroach is different from the female cockroach. So, sexual dimorphism is C. Nearest in the hydra segmented body. Whenever we say nearest, yes, segmental body will be there. Hydra, no segmental body. Clear? Clear? So, what, was, what is the correct option? The correct option we have is option B. Now, which of the following animals is not viviparous? So, not viviparous, that means there is one organism which is oviparous. We have to look for an organism which is oviparous as per the question. Now, elephant, elephant is viviparous, right? This is viviparous. Now, platypus, duck-billed platypus, this is oviparous. This lay eggs. Now, whale, whale is again viviparous. Now, flying fox, this is again viviparous. Yeah. So, which option is right? Option B, platypus. Now, guys, let's move on to the next question. Characteristics are given and these characteristics we have to match. Which of the following represent the correct combination without any exception? Correct combination without any exception. No exception at all. Now, listen. Mouth, ventral, gills, without operculum, skin with placoid scales, persistent notochord. They are saying it is chondric thighs. Is it a characteristic of chondric thighs? Yes, this is 100% characteristics of a chondric thighs without any exception. So, this can be our probable right answer. Let us look at the other option also. Sucking circular mouth, jaws absent, integument without scales and the paired appendages. And they are saying this is the only characteristics of the uh, cyclostomata. No. This is not the only characteristics, incorrect. Body covered with feathers, skin moist, glandular, forelimbs modified into wings, lungs with air sacs, they are saying aves. So, we have some exceptions also in this case. So, this is not the only characteristics. Memory glands, hairs on the body, pinnae, two pairs of the limbs, they are saying mammalia. No. So, correct option we have is option A, that is uh, chondric thighs. Correct combination without any exception. Now, the active form of antamoeba histolytica feeds on mucosa, submucosa of colon, food in intestine, blood only, erythrocyte mucosa, and submucosa of colon. So, basically, antamoeba histolytica, right? Uh, this uh, uh, protozoans they feed on, see, whenever we consume uh, outside food contaminated with the cyst of antamoeba histolytica. Now, these cystic forms, whenever they enter, they uh, uh, feed on the RBCs, the erythrocytes, the mucosa and submucosa of the intestine. The correct option we have is option D. Option D is correct. Now, moving on to the next is, which of the following endoparasite of human does not show viviparity? Oh, sorry, does show viviparity. So, they show viviparous. So, that means they directly give birth to young one. Antrobius, we have pinworm. Vermicularis, Trichena sp uh, spiralis, then we have is Ascaris lumbricoids, uh, and Cyclostoma duodenale. So, this you have to remember that is Trichenella spiralis is the one, this is what they uh, do, no, uh, does show viviparity. So, they show viviparity. They show viviparity, right? Whereas the rest of them, they lay eggs, right? Ascaris, you know that we have discussed right now also, Ascaris, they lay egg. 
Now, metagenesis refer to another question. Metagenesis, presence of segmented bodies and parthenogenetic mode of reproduction. Presence of different morphic forms, alternation of generation between the asexual and the sexual phases of organism. Occurrence of drastic change in the form during the post embryonic development. Four options are there. Nine. Now, when we say the metagenesis, metagenesis, you know, we have discussed first of all in the case of nidarians, sealant traits. Right? What do they do? They show alternation of generation. What do they show is alternation of generation. Of generation. That means their sexual form alternate with the asexual form. You remember polyp in the medusae form? So they alternate with one another. Polyp medusae, then polyp, then medusae. So they alternate with one another. Remember Nidarian life cycle? So that is termed as metagenesis. Very nice. Option C is correct in this case. That is alternation of generation between the asexual and the sexual form of organism. Both of them, they will altern alternate. Now, if I say the medusae form, medusae forms, they are those forms which show the sexual reproduction. The uh, polyp form are those which show the asexual reproduction. So, they alternate with one another. First of all, we have is the medusae form. These medusae form, they uh, join together or they produce gam gametes. They form zygote and they form the larval stages. Larva settle down and it forms the polyp. Polyp grows and it forms the medusae. So, this is how the life cycle goes on. So, this is what? This is a metagenesis. Clear? So, two things exist in the nidarians that is polymorphism, that is the different forms they have, and second is a metagenesis. One of the examples we have studied nidarians. Now, which of the following animals should two separate circulatory pathways? Two separate circulatory pathways. That means complete separation is there. Uh, uh, shark, frog, lizard, or the whale. So, in the case of mammals, separate circulation is seen. Basically, in the mammals, we have is a separate circulation. You remember, from the heart, we have uh, one circulation, pulmonary cir circulation, you remember? And then we have is a one systemic circulation. So, both separate circulation. That is seen in case of whales. Clear? Whales. Now, next one we have is body having meshwork of cells, internal cavity lined with the food, filtering flagellated cells and indirect development are the characteristics of the phylum. Protozoa, sealant traits, porifera or mollusca. Now, what they are saying is internal cavities have, we have internal cavities lined with food filtrating flagellated cells and indirect development are the characteristics of porifera. Guys, you remember? You remember? So, in the poriferans, this is how the cells, they are arranged. You remember? This is how the cells, they are arranged. I am just making a rough diagram. Now, now the outer side, we have is a pinacocytes. We have is a pinacocytes, which form pinacoderm. Now, towards the inner side, we have is a coanocytes coanocytes forming the coanoderm and these cells they are flagellated right and they have an internal cavity which is termed as spongoseal they have this cavity which is termed as spongoseal right now this opens to the outside through osculum now, these are the small small gaps present, which is termed as ostia. So, this is what they are talking about, and they are seen in the poriferans. Clear? Now, a jawless fish, this is a jawless fish. So, whenever a jawless comes, so always remember the one example we have is a cyclostomes. The jawless fish which lays eggs in the water, whose uh, uh, MOC eats lar uh, larva after metamorphosis return to the oceans. What is the right answer? Right answer we have is Tyromyzon. Clear? Now, next is which of the following characteristic features always hold true for the corresponding group of animals? Cartilaginous exoskeleton, that is chondric thighs. So, chondric thighs, they always have a cartilaginous exoskeleton without any exception. Have you heard any exception? Have we ever talked about any exception? Do your NCRT talked about uh, any exception? No. This is absolutely right. Always holds true. 
viviparous they are saying mammals no some um, uh, you can say some exceptions they are present now next is possess a mouth and the upper jaw and the lower jaw no this is not absolutely correct three chambered heart they are saying reptiles and we have a well known example of crocodile which has four chambered heart so which option are we going for option a so this is how guys you have to look for a correct option start exploring each and everything from first option to the last option why this option is correct why other options they are incorrect other examples what are the examples which are related to it sometimes yes it is like uh, we are practicing more and more questions sometimes we can skip one or two because those are the things which we have to learn because it's animal kingdom without any exception or sometimes it is like we have a only example is this the other examples they are not related to it those things you can skip but when we have a concept related to it always remember why this particular concept is wrong or what are the exceptions which is related to it because same same if i am saying that this is a pyq and these pyqs they are important this is in the history that no pyqs are repeated the, but the concepts which are related to it they are repeated the examples which are related to it yes they are repeated and this happens so the, you must have seen so many sessions on the youtube where we are discussing that these topics they are important why these topics they are important because many time the questions continuously comes from these topics that is the reason you have to practice pyqs also that is the reason for you guys only we have started the series of the pyqs now which one of the following characteristics is not shared by birds and the mammal not shared not shared ossified endoskeleton breathing using lungs viviparity the correct answer we have is a viviparity right mammals most of the mammals they are viviparous but they are not but birds they lay eggs you all know birds lay eggs choose a correct statement again we have to look for a correct statement see every time i don't know why the crocodile is their favorite the cyclostome is their favorite the tyromyzon is their favorite so this you have to uh, at least remember correct statement all the reptiles they have a three chambered heart no this is not right pisces they have a gills covered with operculum all pisces they are not they are not the gill all uh, of them their gills are not covered with operculum only the bony fishes are the one whose gills are covered with operculum mammals are oviparous no all mammals are not oviparous whereas the cyclostome do not possess jaws and the paired fin this is right see see there are some topics which are examiners favorite this you must have noticed during the session it's like many times these things are repeated from the same topic because they are examiners favorite and that is the reason we keep on saying guys these topics they are important you have to focus on it because questions they are asked like this this is what you have to do now which of the following is correct match this is a correct match balanoglossus hemichordate internal fertilization sexes are separate aplysia they are saying mollusk and the segmented body pristis porifera spicules uh, specular uh, skeleton pleurobranchia they are saying tenophora and they have a tissue level of organization that means or they are diploblastin so what will be the right answer guys tell me what will be the right answer so correct option we have is option d that is pleurobranchia tenophora tissue level of organization and they are a diploblastic they are diploblastic pristis whenever say pristis pristis is what guys what is pristis pristis is your fish right this is a, your fish only na so how can you say that they belong to the porifera no this is also wrong now aplysia uh guys pristis is a uh, basically a fish so this you have to remember pristis are those uh, which have fish uh, these are the fishes now aplysia mollusca segmented body no balanoglossus hemichordates this is wrong they show external fertilization right so hope this is correct we'll go for option d in this case ne now select the correct option about the given below these are the two uh, images are given first is a and the second is b now first one alligator dry cornified skin four chambered heart macropus we have is a oviparous uricotelic now these are the crocodile oviparous four chambered heart now what is this is it a crocodile or alligator they have a long snout what is this this is a crocodile 
this is a crocodile this is not alligator this is a crocodile and this is what this is your macropus macropus right so the first option of alligator is eliminated second they are saying they are oviparous no next is crocodile oviparous in the four chambered heart this looks correct we'll go for this option opossum no right clear clear buddies yes guys is it clear so we'll go for option c again in this case now which of the following is not a correct match this is not the correct match we have various options the first one is a cockroach drain and the sewage sea urchin deep sea starfish sea rock earthworm dry soil and the leaf which of the following is a correct match correct match we have to look for a uh, sea urchin that is found in the deep sea and the sea stars they are saying the sea stars they are found in the sea rock so guys in this question we have various animals in their habitat listen so we have to look for a correct match the cockroach that they say is they live in a drain in the sewage this is right sea urchin yes this is found in the deep sea absolutely right here is a starfish found in the sea rock yes they are bottom dwellers and the earthworm they are saying dry soils in the leaf no this live in the wet, wet soil and they feed on the leaves wet yes not a dry soil they do not live in it so i guess there is some problem in this question this is not is correct this is incorrect right if we have to look for a correct incorrect option we will be going for option d a b c they are correct a b c they are correct clear now let's move on to the next question an important characteristics that hemichordates share with the chordates hemichordates share with the chordates ventral tubular nerve cord pharynx with gill slits pharynx without gill slits absence of notochord what will be the right answer correct answer we have is a pharynx with gill slit this is a characteristics which a hemi chordates as well as chordates share clear now now which among these is a correct combination of aquatic mammals four options are there aquatic mammals dolphin sees in the trigon trigon is not a, a mammal right next we have is whales dolphins and seals whales dolphins and seals this looks correct these are the mammals only trigon whales in the seals whales in the seals yes they are mammals but not trigon i guess first no uh, now seals dolphin and the shark shark is not a mammal so we'll go for option b in this case this was again a very easy question from your ncert itself guys now in case of poriferan the spongo seal is lined by flagellated cells which is termed as coanocytes this we have already discussed so what do they have guys is a coanocytes so these coanocytes uh, uh they line the internal cavity which is a spongo seal clear so we can go back and i can show you that diagram also which we have drawn related to uh these group of organisms see what do they have guys is these internal lining of the cells these are the coanocytes they form coanoderm and in the central cavity we have is a spongo seal and they show canal system also very important topic again the canal system clear okay now moving on to the next we have is which of the following is a correct option correct option again we have to look for frog they are saying external fertilization this is right yes frog show external fertilization coleodon external fertilization no they show internal fertilization exocetus they show external fertilization ophiura internal no external fertilization right so which option is right always remember that this is this is also many time it was asked like frog show internal or external fertilization it always show external fertilization clear now let's move on to the next question which of the following they have internal fertilization sea urchin platypus frog in the labio now in this case whenever we are saying internal fertilization that means fertilization is happening inside the body the correct answer we have is platypus so platypus is a one which shows the internal fertilization and they lay eggs also so option b is correct whereas rest of them they show external fertilization we have talked about the frog also so frog 
they show external fertilization external fertilization right whereas we have a labio also that also show external fertilization we have a search sea urchin also that also show external fertilization right now let's move on to the next question which of the following is correctly matched with their characteristic again guys we have to look for a correctly matched now animals phylums and the characters are given so animal first animal we have is a planaria so planaria planaria right planaria they are saying they platyhelminthes and they show regeneration pleurobranchia they are saying they belong to the nidaria and they show complete adamsia they are saying annelida and they belong to they have nidoblast they are saying ferretima ascalamenthes and the flame cell now listen ferretima you all know it belongs to the um, annelids yes earthworm it belongs to the annelida so this is incorrect next is adamsia adamsia is your celandrate celandrata now next is pleurobranchia this is your tenophora so tenophora they have complete now next is planaria we have is a flatworm so we have is uh, it shows the regeneration this is absolutely right clear Moving on to the next is identify the vertebrate group of animal characterized by the crop and gizzard in the digestive system. Now this we have studied in the previous session also that we have cockroach. Uh, sorry, we have uh, aves are those who have uh, crop in the gizzard. Basically, the teeth they are absent. These are the adaptation towards the flight. So they have a crop where they can store in the gizzard also, which help in the grinding of the grains which they eat. So correct option we have is aves. Now, which of the following feature is used to identify a male cockroach from the female cockroach? You know, the males, they are always famous for showing a style. So, they have a style. Four wings with a darker tegmina. Tegmina is a four wing. No. Presence of caudal style. Yes. So, caudal style is a style which is present in the case of cockroach. So, basically the male cockroach, that is a ninth segment of male cockroach male cockroach clear presence of board shaped sternum no presence of anal cerci in fact anal cerci is present in both it is present in both male and females it is present in both guys male as well as females whereas when we say the styles styles are only present in the case of uh, males. Now, next is which of the following does not show metamorphosis? These are the organisms which do not, does not show metamorphosis. The correct option we have is the earthworm. Earthworm doesn't show metamorphosis. Have we ever talked about it? Earthworm? No. So, whereas the moth, the tunicate, and the starfish they show metamorphosis, whereas earthworm doesn't show metamorphosis. Now, next is select the correct sequence of organ in the elementary canal of the cockroach starting from mouth. So, correct sequence we have to look for from the cockroach. In the cockroach, right? Yes. So, the cockroach they have is a pharynx, they have is a esophagus, then they are saying crop, then they, show, uh, they have a crop, then gizzard, then ileum, colon, and the rectum. Second one they are showing is pharynx, then the esophagus, then they are showing the gizzard, the crop, and the ileum, colon, and the rectum. Pharynx, esophagus, then they have is a gizzard, ileum, no, this is this. Uh, next one we have is a phalanx, esophagus, ileum, crop, gizzard, then they have is a colon and the rectum. Guys, you have to look for a correct option. Look for it and tell me the correct option. So, as you can see, the pharynx, esophagus, crop and the gizzard, uh, ileum, colon and the rectum. See, the first option is correct. First option is correct. Now, in this case, see, or the frog, we have talked about in the previous session also. So this is how and the next one they have is a gizzard present gizzard uh, the crop region is present first this is how a pharynx is then they, uh, they have the next one that is a esophagus then they have is a pouch like structure just, uh, which we call it as a crop then they have is a gizzard and after the gizzard they have is a ileum colon and the rectum so correct option we have is option a now moving on to the next is which of the following organism with the respective characteristics so first we have is a pila in the case of the pila, what do we have? Flame cells, complete, redula, or malfeasant tubule. Pila, pila have 
a masticating structure which is a radula which help in grinding basically right uh, next is a bombyx bombyx mori you know that is your silk worm so silk worm uh, these are your insects and insects they always have malpighian tubules pleurobranchia tenophores they have complates right and tenia solium they have flame cells flame flickering like actions they show flame cells so they help in excretion what will be the right answer first we have is option 3 so all these three options they are correct for the b we have is option 4 this seems correct for option c option 2 this also seems correct and this is yes we'll be going for option 2 in this case option 2 is absolutely right clear so guys guys with this we have completed the today's session where we have discussed so many questions so many pyqs from your chapter of animal kingdom i want you guys to practice more and more questions this was just a session where we are discussing uh, some important pyqs and you must have noticed that many times the question concepts they are being repeated some examples they are continuously being repeated so those examples definitely they are important so keep practicing it again i am saying the session was important go for each and every uh, question and uh, this is how your practice strategy should be you have to look for the correct option along with that why other three options they are incorrect so this should be your strategy so let's wind up the session over here we are going to meet next where i'll bring another chapter another chapter some more questions some more practice we are going to do till then take care keep studying keep yourself safe in this time bye bye